Hey everybody, Austin here, uh, back for another trade recap. But before I start, I want to say I'm not licensed, I'm not registered, uh, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. But yeah, solo the uh, the the trade of the day. I've been thinking, oh, for the last 10 or 15 minutes about a good Star Wars ship, but I can't think of any. But Han Solo was on my mind all day, thanks to this suck. Um, but Anyway, yeah, let's, I want to go to the beginning. So at the beginning of the day, um, I looked at the daily chart. <clears throat> it was the first thing, as I always do. I always look at the daily chart. And I saw that we were gapping just above this 165 level. Now, this is important because I, I, I think I, I mentioned it in chat that immediately I was not looking for a short. Because right here at the open, I noticed that we were gapping right here above this 165 level. And if anything, this is kind of like a breakout chart. Like we're breaking out of this consolidation area where this was the the peak and so this is technically like a multi-week breakout and I you know it wasn't even on my short radar because um, you know we're opening here at 170s and uh, in my in my mind there's support at 165 so like if I wanted to short it I would be shorting like a breakdown of 165 and then where am I gonna go like the next support here is 150 I didn't see a lot of meat here to the move like if we had gapped up to like two or two fifty, that would have been that, that would have been a different story. I would have said, "Hey, look, there's some meat to come down before the next support." But um, right here at the open, I didn't even this wasn't even on a short radar because it wasn't gapping high enough. But anyway, um, but then we got this perk here. We got this perk here, and it kind of got interesting. The volume wasn't super spectacular off of the open. Um, you know, the the floats like eleven million chairs, and we were doing like you know, like sub 130,000 on the minutes in the, in the open of the day. So I wasn't actually, I didn't have a lot of high hopes for this actually, you know, until we got this perk and I said, okay, well over 195 and we can get something because of this, this nice volume perk. I was like, you know, maybe this can grow some legs over 195. For me, there was no trade in this range unless I wanted to scalp, which I'm not, um, you know, a, a big, a big scalper. So I was looking for like a breakdown of 165 or like a breakout of 195. But um, after we failed pretty hard here, I kind of lost hope. And we saw the volume die and we kind of lost, I kind of lost hope for it. But, um, and I think the volume was like two or three million chairs. So nothing to scoff at, but nothing super spectacular for this size of a float. It's been seen before. Um, but then let's fast forward. Yeah, let's get the whole chart here. Yeah, this is the whole chart. Wow, yeah. So you see, I traded it over here, and I thought I was being patient. So uh, when we got this um, perk and fail like under view, I thought it was over until we perked up again here. But at this point, I didn't want to buy it so this close to the high of day in the middle of the day. I kind of let it go and ignored it. And you know, I was kind of happy I ignored it here. And then you know, like all of a sudden, I looked away, and boom, there it was. And um, kind of caught everybody by surprise. Caught me by surprise. But this is definitely where I was interested in it now. Um, because now, at this point, the volume was really good. Um, it's proving that it, it's showing signs of life, um, that it doesn't want to break down. And let's go over the components, like my favorite um, Power 3 components. Um, I look at float, volume, and uh, news. The float, I, as, and I mentioned all of this um, earlier, the float was 11 million. Still low. I like under 10, so it was just on the brink of my not perfect, not a setup category. Um, the, the volume wasn't really good until about like this, until about this this squeeze here for me. Like, you know, like under 100,000, it wasn't really wasn't that high, so it didn't catch my radar. And But the news was good, and I did mention that. Like, the news was good. It was, it was a hypey news. And the news um, was, I, I looked it up on Yahoo Finance. Um, the news was right here. It's, it's, uh, this is this is recently, but this explains it the same. Um, they uh, they had their webinar today to go over um, their answer to to Tesla. You know, it was this, they they essentially have a car that's um, a Tesla substitute for like fifteen thousand dollars, and Tesla being a big a big hot you know a hot name right now. It's. Uh, a low float that can compete with Tesla is a is a really big idea. It's a very hype idea. And my rule of thumb is my rule of thumb is is if this is a news that can be 
that I can hear about the second day, um, and especially by the, uh, on the second day, by a non-trader friend, someone comes up to me and says, hey, have you heard of that company that can, you know, that's doing what Tesla's doing and they're a small baby company? Like, that's something that, that people can get excited about that's hypey. It's got that hype factor aspect to the news. So that did check out, even if the, the float was a little higher than I wanted and the volume was a little under than I wanted. So for me, I rated this a B setup and, you know, this decided to prove me wrong. This, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, but... Uh, this kind of checks out for a power three, just, you know, a little high high on the float and a little low on the volume until here, when the volume relative to the float got really good, when over here I think we had traded at least its float, we, f we rotated the float and over here we were just nuts. But my first trade on this was actually to attempt a short. I haven't done a short trade in, gosh, it has to be like three or four months, but I attempted a short around three because... This is where I saw some heavy selling um, on the last, on the daily, and it was starting to get like that 2 p.m. ish area. And I was like, you know, it's if it's gonna fade, it might fade from right here. And so I wanted to give it a shot. You know, I started throwing some orders out here. I canceled it right away. I was like, okay, if this is gonna break three, I don't want it. Stuffed three, and I said, you know what, let me put those back on. And then we got the, and then we got like, I felt like 290, let me zoom in here. I felt like 290. 290 was the level that was keeping this above three. So the second we broke down 290, I put on some more shares, and then I got and then I got a piece taken off here, and and, it, and I could tell right here is where I got kind of uh, I got kind of nervous because it seemed like we were fighting every inch on the way down. Like I had an order I had an order right here um, at like 272, and I didn't get filled. So I moved it up to 273. I didn't get filled here, and you know I was getting a little bit nervous that like it was just gonna pop back. And I finally did. I filled, I think this is a third of my position here. I filled a third of it and we perked back up to 290, the level that I felt was important. And I, I let it go. And when it looked like we were going to fail again, we failed. I put some more on. I tanked. My order again was 263. I had like a 263 order and 266 held or something like that. Like I can tell like every, every cover was getting fought for. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even make, gosh, 20, 25 cents on that. Like, so and, and I was trying to be conservative, so I'm like, if the conservative shorts aren't getting anything, man, I, I wonder the aggressive shorts that like are maybe still short from the 40s that like are just covering on every dip have to be feeling. So the second we got a reclaim, I covered, and I covered partially because you know because 290 was my stop after this ad, but also because this is becoming a long setup, and I and I mentioned that like this is becoming a long setup that I kind of like the immediate. This is a Again, like on all my long videos, this is a this was the breakdown, the 273 area, like the from the big crack. Um, we broke that level, and then we immediately reclaimed. This is a fake. This is a fake breakdown right here. So, you know, just like OCX, and this was kind of it reminded me a lot about OCX. Let me go back to OCX on the day, so I can kind of show what I'm talking about here on the big day of OCX. Uh, yeah, here it is. It really reminded me of a so strikingly resemblance of that comeback where OCX, it tanked so hard, right? Like broke down that level tank and immediately reclaimed. This is where I was buying here. And I was like, man, this is very familiar. I got to be, I got to be covering at least and if not longing. So when we go back to solo, you know, it, it looks strikingly similar. And it's one of my favorite long patterns is the, the failed breakdown and then the immediate reclaim like I covered right away and then I was looking for the long I almost bought it here too but I gave it a little bit of time I did decide to put on a starter here and over here I was getting way nervous that we were gonna crack but I knew that shorts had to be equally nervous it was a tug and war battle who was gonna win and for me that 290 level was the key level and once we perked through there after after a long consolidation you know I said hey I'm now gonna move my wrist down here to that 280 level and I'm, you know, I put the rest of my size on. And given how late it was in the day, I, I knew I was gonna, you know, I was already small red from the short earlier. And I was like, you know what? I know I'm gonna be piking this, but it's late in the day. This isn't a com comfortable time that I'm normally trading. I'm normally trading these setups in the mornings. You know, I knew I was gonna pike it. I even said like, I'm piking this. I'm taking the money. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting green on the trade. And 
I'm going to cry if it goes higher, but hey, if it goes higher, we got to set up for tomorrow. And so I did, I bought it here and I piked the crap out of it. Not the best trade. Um, this was actually a little bit of a break of discipline for me. You know, anyone who knows the way I like to trade, I like to take off a third for a scalp, um, a third for a trade, and a third for a home run. And, you know, of course, the one time I don't, <laughs> the one time I don't, look at this. <laughs> so, look at how insignificant that looks. Um, so, wow. It's just amazing. But anyway, yeah, so like I this, you know, like a third would have been where I took it off. I should have taken off a third where I did. You know, my trade probably would have been here in the 40s or in the high 30s. That would have been the trade part of my thing. And I don't know how long I, I probably would have sold the rest at four. Or, you know, if I was really patient, maybe I could have waited for a lower low to get out. That's that's another strategy. Wait for a lower low or wait for a big stuff or some kind of short, you know, kind of signal to get out. But, you know, I highly doubt I would have stayed for that. But, you know, um, this is a this is a good example of, you know, how, how, how hype factor and volume relative to the float can really just push a stock forward. And, um, I you know, if, if I hadn't had just effed around with the short here, you know, I might have been in a clear mind, but I was red on the day. It's not the, you know, it's not the best, you know, decision making to, to, to trade the PL and that's kind of what I did is you know I was right on the day and I just you know like it was a kind of a an annoying short because I, I I couldn't get my fills like and then it ripped back I'm like you know what what am I doing short it's looking like a long and and then I and then I had the, the thought that like oh man I'm gonna lose long I'm gonna lose short and then like I, I like at this point I was so close to losing long like I was gonna lose short and lose long I, I had that just so much emotions going through and I was just, I was ready to be done and you know, I let an emotion make the decision and, you know, I paid the price. Look at this. Look at this. This is all money. This is all money. Like, I, I doubt it would have been th through four, but I would have been, I would have made it a lot more than 310. So I'm actually a little disappointed in myself in this trade. I'm really proud of my patience for the short. You know, like I didn't get caught in this. I didn't get caught in that. Um, you know, I did attempt it where it kind of did like start to work, you know, a little bit rusty, but, you know, I... I felt kind of good about this, you know, I thought I had it, and and then when I went red on it, and then, like, I thought I was going to lose long, I let emotions get in the way, and I piked a great trade, you know, end of story, <laughs> not not the best, but at least, I'm, I, I'm hoping you guys can kind of see, like, a familiar um, pattern to the stocks that I like, again, like, if this had just been, like, maybe 7 million shares float, and it was a little bit higher volume at the start of the day, more activity, I probably would have, um, I probably would have labeled it an A setup, but for me it was a B setup, and it did decide to prove me wrong. It said, "Hey, no, 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 Tesla's way too important. Uh, Tesla is way too important to be a B setup." But um, you can see a familiar pattern with like you had MRIN, big company is Google. You had Enbev, the big company um, related was Coke, and Solo, the big company related is Tesla. This is becoming a very, very prominent plant. Um, type of news that likes to create squeezers and you know they're not all going to be big company news some of some of the hype factor news that i like is like achieved profitability or you know um a huge contract or you know like a elimination of debt you know s stuff that's truly something that can truly get exciting but my my rule of thumb is normally the is this a news that i can potentially hear the next day and this is definitely a news that I can hear the next day. A fifteen, a fifteen thousand dollar substitute to Tesla is really hype news, and I wish I would have, you know, I wish I would have put a little bit more stock in it. But, uh, you know that that's all I can, that's all I can think of right now. If you guys have any other questions, or if any of you guys nailed it, like, you know, congrats on you. Like, um, if you guys shorted it, I hope maybe there is a warning sign that like I can. That, that maybe I showcased here um, this this idea of where's the meat um, like where's the meat you know like before when I used to shorten like in my first year I, I didn't I you get in trouble with this and this was one of the first things that I learned to avoid was don't short if there's no meat there's no, what what's what where's where's the, 
what's how's it worth it where's the target and i couldn't justify a target above 150 or like you know best case scenario goes back to 140 over here you know that's 30 cents like that you know that's you can make that on you can make that every day there's this there's, this wasn't um for me a golden short opportunity it's more of a long opportunity i wish i would have valued it higher anyway um so I ended up ended it, anyway. I ended up small green on it after being small red. So you know a win, but feels like a loss. But that's trading. Anyway, any questions you guys have, or you guys want to go over your trades on it, you know, feel free to feel free to DM me. Aloha.